Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Clockwork Heart or Nikki from J2NA Games. And whatever brings you here today, welcome and thank you for joining me. Uh, so today, or now, I'd like to talk about uh, the pre-surgical liquid diet, which I am on right now. And I am on day 12? Yeah, I think 12. Um, it's actually been not as bad as I thought it would be. So the pre-surgical liquid diet, depending on who you have your surgery through and um, just what your doctor's requirements are, your pre-surgical liquid diet may or you may not have one at all or it may be different than what I've got. So what I have to do is three to four protein shakes a day depending on how much protein is in them and I'm using Premier, sorry, I'm so bright. Um, Premier protein, which is not going to focus on because my light is very bright, so I'm sorry about that. But um, it has 30 grams of protein and 160 calories, which is pretty good for protein shakes. Most of them have like a lot of calories and not a lot of protein, and this is the one people swear by. They're like, oh, it's so delicious, it's so good, and it's alright. The chocolate is, I hate it, but... For a change of pace, I'll drink the chocolate. I haven't tried the vanilla. Vanilla has always been my least favorite flavor of protein shake, so I didn't even try it. Um, I've been doing chocolate and strawberry. Um, so you do three to four of these a day, depending on how much protein is in them. They want you to get about 90 grams of protein. So I've only been doing three of these. Actually, half the time it's only two. I just forget to drink a third one. Um, and then you can have unlimited amounts of clear broth or strained broth-based soup like minestrone or chicken noodle. Um, I've been using Swanson beef broth mainly um, with a little bit of sriracha and hoisin in it. Makes it cake taste kind of like pho broth, so it's making it a lot more bearable than just plain broth. Um, I've also been having strained minestrone. I had strained Mexican tortilla, sh tortilla soup the other day and that didn't strain super well, so I don't recommend that. Um, but yeah, just trying to switch it up. You can also have sugar-free jello and sugar-free popsicles. So you don't really get to chew, which I thought would be a big problem for me, but it hasn't been. So I guess that's good. Um, lost my train of thought. Um, sugar-free jello, I can't really taste the sugar-freeness of it, so that's exciting. Um, and the popsicles, you really can't tell any difference between the regular popsicles and the sugar-free popsicles. So that's great. I've actually been doing really well on this diet. Um, I thought I would have a lot of cravings and it would just be unbearable. And I did the first couple of days. Like when John and Andrea would make dinner downstairs, it would just be like, oh my god, I need to go down there and eat that. Um, but oddly, it wasn't for things that I thought I would crave. Like I thought it would be like, oh, I want carbs and... I want a sandwich or chocolate chips, anything like that. The things like if I smelled them cooking chicken, it was like, oh, I gotta have that chicken. Uh, when John has eggs, I, he had his wisdom teeth out, and so I had to cook for him a couple of times so he could have something soft to eat, so I could make him eggs. And it was just like, oh, I really, really want some eggs. Um, so it's just been weird the things I was craving. I thought they would, I thought it would be bad for me stuff, but it's been the good for me stuff that I've missed. Except I went to the movies with one of my friends and oh my god the popcorn smell nearly killed me. But I made it through. Did good. No popcorn for me. I will eat a ton of popcorn in a year when I've reached my goal weight or however long it takes me to reach my goal weight. I'm gonna binge on popcorn and then go back to not having popcorn. But um, I think I'll miss popcorn the most. That or sushi rice. One of the two. Um, so you can also do like make your own protein shakes with water and protein powder but and as long as it's a whey based protein and your doctor or your nutritionist will give you more specific requirements for what you can and can't have. Um, but I tried the powder for a long time and it just made me so nauseous. I, for, I could never get it mixed up well even with the, one of the shaker bottles that has a little whisk ball in it, could not get it mixed up well enough to be good. And even when it was mixed decently, I would still get nauseous. And it just it just wasn't enough protein, I guess, to keep me full. But these Premier Protein Shakes have actually been doing a really good job. Uh, I haven't even had any broth or jello or popsicles today. I've had like two protein shakes and I'll go have another while I'm editing videos. Um, so 
I guess getting toward the end of the diet, it's easier. I guess, maybe. For me, anyway. I know a lot of people, just reading online, a lot of people do struggle with it, and you know, it's not surprising. We live to eat. People my size is pretty much what we exist for, eating. Um, and you don't get to eat at all, so... But it's good teaching because after the pre- after the surgery, then you have two weeks of full liquid, two weeks of purees, and two weeks of soft food. So, you gotta learn to eat what you gotta eat for the sake of your stomach. You don't want to have to go back in there and have another operation. Uh, and I think a lot of a lot of what you see online is people asking if you can or can't cheat. And I don't have an answer for you. I had one bite of hot dog. I'm, it was back toward the very beginning. John was having a hot dog and I was really craving it so I had one bite. Um, I had one grilled chicken nugget the other day from uh, Chick-fil-A. And a couple of times it's just like slipped my mind what I'm supposed to be eating and what I'm not supposed to be eating. So for example, the first Saturday I was on this diet and I was at work, we have a bowl of M&Ms out. And I just grabbed, thankfully only two, I grabbed two and popped them in my mouth and ate them before I realized what I was doing because it's habit. Um, and, you know, I was talking to my doctor because my pre-surgical exam was just a few days ago and I was like, I had a slip up or two and he's like, don't worry about it, you'll be fine. But I think it was more of a, I know you haven't slipped up a lot, so you'll be fine. I don't think it's a good idea, I don't even think it was a good idea to have the few bites that I've had, to be honest. I think you need to follow strictly as possible what your doctor is recommending. Um, but I realize that that's kind of almost impossible, so just be very, very careful. Try as hard as you possibly can not to have anything that's not on your recommended diet. Water. Drink tons of water because it keeps your mind off of wanting to eat as long as you're full of water. A lot of times people will eat because they're thirsty and they just don't realize it. I googled that or something. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But um, I think I read that somewhere. So yeah, just stay hydrated, follow your diet, do your best not to cheat, and talk to your doctor if you're having problems. If you've cheated a lot, definitely let them know because it's to shrink your liver so that they can get to your stomach to do the surgery. And if they can't get to your stomach to do the surgery, they could get in there, they could cut you open, get in there and be like, ah, well this liver is still freaking huge so we can't do anything. And then you've been under anesthesia and cut open for nothing. So talk to your doctor like I did. I was like, I had a few slip ups. And he said it was fine. So he's not expecting any problems. But that's why you've got to talk to your doctor. Have a question? Talk to your doctor. Always talk to your doctor. Number one answer for everything. Talk to your doctor. But I mean, that's really all I had to say about the pre-surgical liquid diet. I mean, uh, I guess I could mention I've been using Swanson beef broth. Um, they're pretty cheap and they come in like boxes of broth. And um, Progresso makes uh, ready-to-eat soups. I have. I think you should stay away from the condensed soups. That, like, how do you strain that? I don't know. You have to make it like with extra water and then strain it, I guess. But I've just been getting the Progresso broth based soups um, and those have worked out great so I guess those are the soup brands I'd recommend for you. Swanson used to make, I'm a little bit butthurt, Swanson used to make flavored broths. They had like uh, Tuscan herb, hot and sour, Mexican tortilla, something else, something I don't, I wouldn't have thought I would like. Uh, I don't remember what the other ones are, but they made a bunch of, oh, Thai ginger. I don't like ginger, so I wouldn't have liked that, but they made a bunch of flavored broths, and I was so excited to get to my broth period so I could try all these flavored broths. They don't make them anymore, so if you find them, you are lucky. And if you have them, sell them on eBay or something. They're probably worth a lot. I don't know. Anyway, I guess that's really all I have to say about the pre-surgical liquid diet. It was not as hard as I thought it would be, and I am almost done, so I am super excited. My surgery is in two days from recording this video. It is Sunday night, so Monday, Tuesday, surgery is first thing Wednesday morning. So uh, I don't know when you'll be seeing this video, I'll put something like a comment, and, oh, the today is blah blah blah, days from my surgery. But yeah, I made it so far, no slip ups in the next two days. Um, and you can make it too, just hang in there. It's not as bad as it seems, and it'll be worth it in the end. Always remember, it will be worth it in the end. So, 
Thank you guys so, so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.